the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Say that a when we start studies and sessions is we're not going to be, we don't need to be the traditional uh, religious services and studies. We, we need to be straight up and, and, and teach the word, talk the word, discuss the word with simplicity and understanding. That's the key. And to be able to apply the, what we teach, what we learn, what we discuss, and and and, and, and apply it into our everyday life, because you got to remember, and if you don't know, the, the the Bible said that the just shall live by faith, meaning we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith in God. We trust in, in Him as part of our life. Now, I know that the the. As you see on the different social media platforms and so forth, that a lot of people uh, think that the, the 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 teaching of the gospel, the 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 word, the Bible, which is, which hey look is a good thing that you know is it's called uh, Bible. The the I don't know if you ever heard it before, but the one of the good acronyms is Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Amen. It's basic instruction before leaving Earth, and that means before you, you know, either get caught up when the, when when God comes, and that that'll be a that'll be a blessing, uh, or when you actually pass away individually, uh, and then you leave Earth, you leave this realm, you leave this physical realm, you leave the physical laws, and and that's something that is 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 academic, right? All of us know that every one of us. Uh, unless the Lord comes back, uh, will expire. All the people in the history books and all those other things, all those people have expired. That's just, just part of life, right? And it's a blessing if you can live a long and prosperous life uh, that you can uh, leave with some, maybe leave with a legacy. Uh, you want to have a legacy. You want to have the best legacy. Is this I'm a believer. And that your testimony, your life is a testimony. Uh, but the key to it is that, that it's, it's not rhetoric. It's not religious. And I think that so many times the, the, we get caught up into the, the religious aspect. And when I mean religious aspect, I'm talking about when you start doing the, things that are not a part of the Bible. But it's just traditions and, and 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 rituals that that is is sometimes just doctrinal traditions, opposed to the fact is that what is written, and that's what we talk about, and that's what this this platform is about is let's do things that are written, and and let's do them and apply those things in our life daily. And, and let people see that we're living a life of a believer. And one of the things that being, living a life of a believer is bearing good fruit, right? The fruits of the Spirit. Because some of you don't know what the fruits of the Spirit are, I'm going to tell you. Because we, we need to know what the fruits of the Spirit are. And we need to also know that the, the works of the flesh are those things that we don't, most of us don't want to live with anyway. But we do it. You know, we have a default to live by the flesh and do things by the flesh instead of trying to do things by the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22, 23. Now, the fruits of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law. And there's no law against loving. There's no law against having peace. There's no law having joy. There's no law of being patient. There's no law against uh, being good and gentle, you know, uh, having self-control, being meekness. And, and, and one of the things that we really need to exercise those things is to survive daily. Because one of the, I was looking at a video recently where this police officer who retired and now is, is actually doing protests and uh, 
petitions about against the practices of the police force where a lot of people that we talk about going after uh, you know racial profiles and so forth is that they say well they, they first got this policy that they got to make arrests, right? And you know, the mass incarceration is, is out there. And, and that really needs to be, that needs to go. That needs to go. Uh, but the other thing too is that they target the most vulnerable people. They target poor white people. They target poor black people uh, because they said they're easy targets because most cases they're not going to put on a legal defense. They don't have any political power. They don't need somebody they can draw from to, to, to rely on it. And those things like that, that when they act, you know, they be disrespectful uh, towards you, they, they do it because they know that you, they feel that you, you have, you as a poor, especially somebody that's poor, you have nobody to reach back to. You don't have nobody that's going to advocate in your behalf uh, and and what I will sit there and say that you you need to bear good fruit in encountering regardless of their actions because like the recently with the one with Tyree the their the police gave, gave a report but the video camera shows that what you're saying does not line up with the your behavior and your actions and and what we want to do is to encourage everybody really you need to listen to this bear fruit in any encounter of life in any way when you encounter police officer when you encounter encounter people your family members your friends your neighbor bear good fruit and what i mean is you you don't need to to, to be going off on people and and, and, and being uh, agitated and, and, and just coming out on the flesh. Because what's going to happen is, in this case of this, it's going to create a reaction. And, and, and when we deal with some time with the police force, some of those people want you to react. You know, simple traffic stop, get out of the car. This is what the guy was on the video. You know, and you know, you're saying, why I got to get out of the car? What, what? Give me a ticket. If you got to give me a ticket, give me a ticket and let me go. But the person says that wants to be disrespectful, wants to escalate the situation, and then wants you to respond so that they can sit there and say you the one that was in, uh, not cooperative. You know, like even in sports, say a lot of cases, the the referee catches the person who retaliates back toward the person who actually made the offense. So what we want to do, what I'm recommending is to bear good fruit meaning don't go off of somebody because if you want to go off go off in the courtroom because that's where the, that's where they're supposed to be that's where the dispute's supposed to be you know you you, you don't have to resist because if the guy rests you uh, unlawfully then then take it to the courtroom but what they you haven't noticed that a lot of cases they come in like was the person cooperative was the person did the person resist arrest those are the type of things they're looking for you know in the video we cooperate that or the video would say there was no there was no resistance you know but you, but trying to get advocate for people who actually wants to arrest you people that actually wants to hurt you and you bear and you you're fighting that you know i mean unless i guess a lot of us want to just be martyrs opposed to saying let's deal with this in the courtroom and someone goes, I can't afford well, you. Well, if they're going to put you in the courtroom, whether you afford it or not. Uh, and you, you both have a court appointed, you know, a lawyer appointed for you. That, that guy, that court appointed lawyer, a lot of cases, he's just trying to do the best he can uh, with overloading cases and so forth that don't give the enemy ammunition. So this idiot going to fight, not, you know, not going to fight for you. But if you, you is an open and shut case, that person will defend you. Best uh, by the law. Let the video. Matter of fact, what I'm saying is, let the video tape speak for itself. And if the guy comes up to you to have his camera on, says, "Sir, please put your camera on," because I want this encounter to make sure that everything is recorded properly. All right? Just, just put, please put your camera on. Just keep saying it. Please put your camera on. And then 
respond in kind if they if and, and if they ask for a license and you don't want you don't think you have the right to give a license give the license anyway and then go ahead and deal with it in the courtroom saying this man uh, unlawfully uh, attained and asked for a driver's license without any reason you know what I mean? So let's let's be smart. Let's use our head when we're dealing with things. I know some cases, regardless of what you do, uh, some people, they, they escalate on their own and do bad things, but they still try to find, and then they'll lie. But let the camera, just always make sure, put the camera on. And if they don't have a body camera, in some states they don't, but a lot of places they do now, they have to have a camera on, uh, is to record it. To, to and you know, sit there and say, "Well, hey, I'm gonna put, just put the put the camera on the uh, uh, on your dashboard and just record the encounter." Uh, some of us got dash cams, keep the dash cam running, and then you record everything. And so I got one of them that the, the one I recently got. You can actually turn it around and 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 and, and record the encounter. That's that's I think it's fair. Uh, I think it's right. They both have a camera. You have a camera. But be, don't try to have a courtroom on in the street. It's not going to work. That's that's just not a story. That's a side trap. Uh, side, what you call it, rabbit trail, or whatever. But what I want to talk about today is in, va- in line with that is to, as believers, we need to understand we have to. Uh, start passing the tests that comes before us uh, just like Christ passed the test and we need to use the tools that he used to pass the test we're talking about this test in life this day that tests you test causes you to either bear good fruit or, or bear bad fruit uh, bear the fruits of the spirit or bear the works of the flesh and, and we can go over those later about what the works of the flesh are but I, I'm definitely saying is that somebody want to test your love people are going to test your joy people are going to test your peace some people are going to test your patience people are going to test your goodness some are going to test your gentleness some are going to test your meekness some are going to test your uh, self control they, they, and they, they get trying to get you off of how God wants you to show, let your light shine. Some people want to try to cover that light, and 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 that's the that's the things an enemy. But just remember, if Christ is going to be tested, we be tested. And so what we want to do is focus on passing the test, and that's what we want to talk about: passing the test. And and one of the things too, I wanted the originally title I was going to have is let no one no man no group can define you and and, and really i want to put that down there is that people carnally not spiritually try to define who you are try to tell you you're something other than what you are see you are all made in the image of god all of us and some people will sit there and give you and demonize you to try to say that you are not and they don't understand that they have to give an account for their behavior. And you need to make sure that people understand, hey, my father in heaven, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with him. Whether you like it or not, you can sit there and you can play that game. You can sit there and think that you have authority over the word of God. And I'm telling you, and one of the things that's driving this train for me is this, or this thought of, of, of belief is, we are who we are because of what God says we are. Are we, we who we are based on what he says we are? <laughs> Many times people want to sit there and, and demonize cultural groups, demonize people based on the color of skin, demonize people because of where they came from, demonize people because of the tall or the short, demonize people because of any differences that they can do, anything they can highlight and try to make you and diminish you they we start look, look, some of that junk started back in the, in kindergarten and goes all the way through high school where people so much wants to reflect and push and direct things negatively towards somebody else to keep the light off of themselves and that's most cases you get even when the police does something uh 
and, and, and they try to call you something, they either call call you something behind closed doors or with, or in, in, out in the open. Or when people, we called each other some names toward each other, whether we're black or white, we called each other different names. You know, like some people sit there and say white trash. Some people sit there, the N word, right? They, you know, and, and we sometimes each group will call themselves the N word. <laughs> uh, and that means ignorant person to a degree, then the color is, is associated with the ignorant, because you could be like ignorant black person, ignorant white person. So that word inward is people starting to catch on what that really means, right? Ignorant person. Uh, or any other negative connotations. And But the thing is that no one has the right authority. No group has the authority to, to demonize other people subvert other people make people be subhuman no nobody can make you a property they can they can lie and call you a property but even that they can't they don't have the you're still a child of god you're still a creation of god you still made the image of god regardless of what people say it doesn't and, and that's the whole point is that you need to understand what is written what is written is far more important than what people wants to say People have generation of generation of discrimination and all that other stuff, telling their children, these people are this, these people are that. You need to make sure when you encounter people, it's to say, I'm a child of God. It is written that I'm a child of God. It even in, in our Lord's prayer that we get ready to do is talking about the fact is that his will be done. That's why I like to talk about the fact about when we talk about the book, when we talk about the Bible, the basic instruction for leaving earth is the fact is that it is telling you just the same thing Christ did. And we're going to go over the temptation of Christ. We're going to say he referred to what is written. And I'm trying to tell you, you are who you are what by what is written in the word of God. See, the word, the, the word of God doesn't call you black. Or what, the word of God doesn't call you white. The, the word of God does not call you a demon. They call you Gentiles if you're not part of the people of the book. I mean, I'm talking about the Jew the Hebrews, the Israelites, those are the people that had cut a covenant with God. But the in, in through Abraham and all the seeds of that. But Christ came and fulfilled all the promises of the Old Testament, old the covenant, and came with a, and, and created a new covenant that incorporates all of us. Whether you are a descendant of, he of being a black Hebrew, whether you are European, whether you are uh, an African, whether you are Chinese or, or Indian or Native American, you, we all are under the covenant of Christ so that we have a relationship with the Father. You are not a the N word. You're not <laughs> um, you're not white trash. You're not you're not ignorant. You're not bad people. You're good people. You are blessed people because it is written that you are. And that's why we want to sit there and focus on. As you go through life, even listen to this right now, is remember, what does the word of God say? And those people who wants to try to get us off the word of God, just make sure that whatever you think you're doing, that you make sure that everyone is defined as having the, 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 the equality the sameness that we're all creations of God. Man, what I'm saying is those are people that sit there and talk about, well, the, the, the Bible comes from all these different types of, of um, I guess, I guess they, they, they talk about uh, religions that, that, that were before they, 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 the, uh, the children of Israel creating uh, the Torah. But the point is, if you feel that you have something better, 
And is that better still brings the fact of fruits of the spirit, a relationship with God, a love toward one another, a mercy and grace for one another? If that's what the message is, let us hear that. But I'm telling you, this gospel is talking about a relationship between you and God, not so much, and then it is a relationship between us, one another. But the point is that those relationships are good relationships. There's a loving father, a loving creator, loving people toward one another and toward God. The, the, the fact is that this gospel talks about a redemption, talking about the fall of man. Some people said, there ain't no fall. Yes, you have. Have you not looked at the history of man? Don't don't give, don't tell people that people haven't fallen from the grace and from the from not fallen from the grace of God, but have fallen and need the grace of God, because the fallen nature of man has this 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 propensity to do bad things, be selfish, thinking only about themselves, and and trying to put other people down so that they can look good. This is the nature of man. And what we're trying to say is the book, the Bible, is trying to show us a better way. And the fact is of a good news. Yes, God sent his son. God sent the word was made flesh. The word of God was made flesh. The, the worlds were framed by the word of God. We all spoke in existence by the word of God. The word of God was made flesh. What's come out of God, the essence of God, came out and made flesh so that we can have a Savior who paid and redeemed the price of sin, the price of separation. That's the gospel. And then he left us the comfort of the Holy Spirit to be with us. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He even said that the king said the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he said that it's not by observation, but it's in you. It is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I have the essence of God in me. You have the essence of God in you. And we are connected through Christ through the anointed one, through the word of God made flesh, through Yeshua, through Jesus, through Joshua. You know, I'm saying this, we're connected. And he wants us to live abundant life just as he said is in heaven. That's why he left us the Lord's Prayer, which is to say that thy will, his will, be done in earth as it is in heaven. And what we want to do as we go through life is to go by what is written about for us. Somebody said, what that mean? What that means is that even when somebody want to call you something else, even when somebody says, I'm trying to tell you you'll never be something, you need to understand that that is not what's written. You need to be able to say where well, it is written that his will be done in my life. And that John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ said he come to give us life and life more abundantly. So that's, that's talk about living now. And it's talking about the fact is that he has prepared a place for us in heaven. So all we need to do is what is written. That's what I'm trying to say. And that's what this platform is all about, is getting and reminding us, let's let the word of God, I see a lot of cases too, we think about the law. Let's talk about the word. And what does the word say of who we are? what the word wants us to do he wants to have a long life he wants to dwell in the secret place he wants us to be children and men of god and women of god he he wants us to be light in this earth he he wants us to to bear the fruits of the spirit that's what he wants us to be and that's what he's asking us to be and those people that sit there want to take us off the word of god what, what does the what does that whatever you tell us to be with this other come whatever doctrine or whatever 
old pagan religion or, or even I'm sorry even even has written religions and, and, and rituals what does it tell you to be did, what what did it pay a price for you because I'm telling you we needed a savior and that's what the gospel is all about. Forget about the people who sit there and talk and call themselves a Christian, because that's a big thing too, and that's what drives a lot of people away. Some people call themselves Christians, but they don't bear good fruit. See, if you believe it, you learn to bear good fruit. You may not start off bearing good fruit because you come in as you are. And that's where some people get confused because the fact is that you still got some issues. Yes, you know what? Most of us have issues. We're going to have issues until Christ comes. But what we want to do is start moving those big rocks off, those big strongholds off, get those out of the way and start focusing on the way that God wants us to be. We want to conform to the image that he wants us to conform to. And that's what this Bible is all about. And that's why we have this platform. Nehemiah 8, 8 says, and so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and cause them to understand the reading. And see, the reading is not religious. The reading is a way of life, saints. We go to church and we sit there and, and try to focus on what, what, what other ministries are doing and, 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 and try to focus on, well, if they don't say it, they don't say it our way, it ain't right. No, let's talk about what's written. Let's focus on that. That's all I'm asking you to do. Therefore, anybody sit there and got a platform to go to the job and say, what does the word say? Go by what the word says. What's written? What is focused on what is written? Let us be who what is written. Sit there with your little minor doctrinal differences. Let's focus on what's written. That's what we're going to talk about. Focus on what's written. And the fact we're going to talk about today is start passing the test. And guess what? The thing about the Bible the test that we have, we have an open book test. We have an open book test. You don't have a test that's closed book and you have to guess the answers. You have an open book test for life. Matter of fact, I should change the title of that. You have an open book test for life, saints. Focus on the test. Look at the book. Study the book. The Bible says, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the, the word. So you want to be able to study, read the word of God for yourself. Everything, at least on this platform, I'm going to give you a scripture so I want you to look at scripture for yourself. And what's more important is not what I say, but what does the word say? Stop, and I'm trying to say stop being religious. And stop trying to focus on the doctrinal differences between the different ministries of Christianity. Then stop focusing on what people say opposed to what does the word say. Regardless of what comes out of my mouth, regardless of what comes out of your pastor's mouth, regardless of what comes out of your ministry mouth, regardless of what comes out of your mama, your daddy's mouth, what does the word say? For it is written. Okay, so we're not talking about just the law. We're talking about who you are based on the word of God and your life supposed to be who you are. Nobody can define you except for what the word of God says you are. Many people want to do that. And, and the bad thing about it is many people are not even qualified to do it because while they're sitting there looking at you and finding faults on you, they end up finding the reality they got false themselves. They got, you know, one scripture said, you know, don't, don't, don't try to take a beam, or not a beam, but a, a smoke or a pebble or, or a speck of sun out of somebody's eye. Well, you got a beam in your own eye, meaning something much bigger come out of your own eye based on your character and nature. And you're trying to correct other people when well, you need to correct yourself first. Amen. A lot of cases you got issues yourself. I got issues myself. That I need to be humble towards somebody else's your faults and recognize that there's just things that they're doing, there's things that I'm doing that needs to be corrected. And we need to be able to pray for one another, encourage one another, instead of sitting there trying to find ways to, to put each other down, ways to draw attention away from ourselves towards somebody else. Let's, let's draw attention toward Christ.
Let's start talk, talk to, to, to what the word of God says, man. All right. So. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. 